Hello, and I'm happy to see you again on my channel. And today we're going to be looking at something that was requested. We're going to take another look at Lyric Frida tape recorder. And I have to tell you that I'm actually very glad to take another look. I love this machine. It's not possible not to love it. First, let me tell you that if, would, if you would like to buy a machine like this, it might take a while. I think your best bet is to set up the search and keep waiting. And maybe at some point it will pop up on eBay or Reverb. They don't pop up very often, but they do appear from time to time. Now, when I bought this machine, it came to me from Italy and I was <clears throat> slightly disappointed that it didn't have its own bright red carrying case. Some machines don't have it and it would be very nice to obtain one, but it's very, very hard. In addition, when I unpacked the machine, it simply refused to work. What do you do in cases like that? I guess the first thing you do is open it up and make sure all the cars are seated properly. It's been a long road from Europe and airplanes, as we know, have very high level of vibration. And I know firsthand that equipment on airplanes <clears throat> may get their screws loosened up and boards popping out of proper position. So once I put all those boards back into their normal position, the machine started working. But it worked kind of. There was something strange with this machine. The pinch roller was really hitting very low, scratching the top panel. And a little bit of examination showed that uh, somebody forgot to install the sleeve that was supposed to sit over the axle below the pinch roller. <clears throat> so I had to fabricate this part. Fortunately, it's not a difficult part to make. And now the pinch roller is sitting at its proper height and everything is working as it should. In terms of overall machine appearance and looks, let me state right away that I consider it an Audrey Hepburn machine. It is so beautiful, it's impossible to pass on and just not to look at it. It's simply gorgeous. The way it's laid out, the way the controls are arranged, the rollers, the head block cover, everything speaks of very, very high quality and beautiful execution. It is also joy to use. The controls are so well arranged and they have great tactile feel. 
So it's, it's a joy to use this machine. Take my word for it. However, my first attempt at using this machine produced very bad results. Something was not right with the tape drive. And here is my advice. Please, please read the manual. Because on this machine, when you lace the tape, you're supposed to press the stop button or any other drive control button to establish the tension. Let me show you how it works. See, now the tension has been established and machine is ready to roll. It's a very compact machine, but at the same time, it's very powerful. It doesn't struggle with reels in rewind mode, even though it is capable of using 12 inch reels, which is a great asset, I would have to say. Unfortunately, it doesn't have 30 inches per second speed, but okay, it's limited to 15. It has three speeds with the 15 being its top speed. Of course, it has balanced inputs and outputs, so it's very well laid out in terms of connectivity. On top of having large size reels available, you can see that it can also take the platters. That's another feature I love, and machine is equipped for that. There are some very nice features to this machine. For example, in addition to normal, normal rewind and fast forward, it's got variable speed one. All you have to do is press one of the rewind keys together with an edit key. And now you have variable speed control from zero in either direction to maximum speed of about 200 inches per second maximum rewind speed. Excellent, excellent. It does it very, very well. And as you can see, the control is incredibly smooth. On top of that, it got a couple of very nice search modes. As you can see here, it can go to the last position or to zero. And let's go back to zero and say play at that point. You see, the machine perfectly executes the command. The action is incredibly smooth. It's one of the smoothest machines that I have in my collection. One small negative here, the head block is not removable. On a machine of this caliber, I would love to have a removable and swappable head block. Okay, but it is what it is. It's still very nicely laid out and the heads are very of very high quality. They are wide track heads, which I, I'm not crazy about because they have very narrow band gap, guard gap. But at the same time, they have very, they are of very good quality. They look like they could be Sony heads to me based on their labels and wiring attachment. Maybe they are Sony, I don't know for sure. As you can see here, the quality of finish is simply superb everywhere on this machine. So next on the list of uh, slight shortcomings, after no replaceable head block, would be mechanical noise. 
If you do internet search, you will find many, many discussions centering around the noise of this particular machine. And I have to say, it makes more noise when running than some machines they have. For example, Sony APR5000 makes virtually no noise. You can stand right next to it, put your ear to it and hear nothing. On this machine, there is a slight amount of noise. And I presume this particular sample is not the noisiest because I have seen people complain about very loud noise. Here it is at a level where you notice it if you are close to the machine and there is no music playing. But otherwise, if you are just a few feet away and you listen to music, it's not going to bother you. In addition to not having box when it came to me, it also didn't have the rest or handle, whatever you want to call it. And unfortunately, that part is impossible to find, even in Europe. I tried, but so far, nothing. So I made one. And the one I made is a temporary solution. I have seen official original drawings from Lyric, and I think I, can, I, I think I see how I can make much better one. That's in my plans. Another item you should be aware of. If you are in the US, there is probably very limited support for this machine. I'm not sure where you would go if machine broke down. And that leads to another aspect of owning this particular machine. I don't use it much. I try to be very careful about this machine and there are some workhorses in my collection, and Lyric Frida is not one of them. I'm trying to be very, very careful because I know if something were to happen, I would be in a very difficult situation. So to me, it's more like beautiful demo piece, part of the collection, a conversation piece, an occasional machine that I'm going to play but it is not one of those machines that I rely on, on in daily use. Just a little bit more on subject of noise. Here you can see the page from service manual, and it is the whole page that deals with the subject of noise. It even describes the modification that the company made to the motor, to the capstan motor, to reduce the noise, including very careful uh, sound absorbing construction. But like I said, I'm not sure if my machine has it already, because it really doesn't bother me, it's that particular noise. It's a little bit too much, but it's not really a problem. <coughs> So once again, thank you so much for coming, and now let's listen to some music. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for stopping by. Goodbye.
And now, as a final small bonus, let me demonstrate that it work. If you turn the machine on and you press the start button, see the reel start accelerating to full speed, which is not very nice. And as far as I can tell, the only way to stop it is by turning the machine off. Like I said, I probably need to look deeper into that to find out whether it is particular sample or the machines in general. Once again, thank you so much for, com for coming. See you next time. Bye-bye.